when Nazi tanks rolled into Poland and started World War II, it not only taught us a grisly lesson about man's inhumanity to man, but it also taught us a very important lesson about the effect of diet and nutrition on disease. Here's what happened. They found that as the war progressed in Europe, that those countries who were occupied by the Nazi armies and could no longer have their usual dietary program, because after all, the Nazis took all the livestock and the cheese and so on away from these occupied countries, the heart disease rates dropped precipitously in these occupied areas. Cancer rates came down. Diabetes almost disappeared. And in 1955, in Germany, it was difficult for physicians to make a living because the people had become so healthy because they had to live on a very, very simple diet. They could no longer afford the steaks and the sausages and the cakes that they had before the war. And this then initiated the famous Framingham Heart Study, funded by the National Institutes of Health. This study, conducted in a small town near Boston, has observed for 50 years people to look at the relationship between their lifestyle and heart disease. And here's what they found. They found that those people at high cholesterol levels were overweight, were smokers, were hypertensives, those people who had diabetes, had high triglyceride levels, and those who didn't exercise and had perhaps a lot of stress, these people were at a dramatically higher risk for this disease called heart disease. They also found that gender, such as being a male versus female, and age and hereditary factors could have an impact on this disease. But the key lesson learned from Framingham is this one. It's the concept called the risk factor concept because it taught us that the more of these risk factors you have, the more likely you develop coronary artery disease, heart disease, with the underlying disease process called atherosclerosis. But think of it. Five of the eight controllable risk factors are under the control of our lips. It has to do with what we eat. Let me show you a little clip here that will help you to get some idea of the relationship between diet and atherosclerosis. I first woke up, so to speak, when I was working on the anesthesia service, learning how to put people to sleep. And I was seeing my patients for the next day's surgery for coronary artery bypass surgery in order to bypass clogged arteries in their heart. Because it was late at night, I drew the man's blood test, and when I took the blood to the laboratory and had it processed, I couldn't believe my eyes. Now normally, this liquid layer floating on top of the blood clot is quite transparent. It's a yellow, but quite clear. You can see right through it. The blood in this patient's tube, however, was anything but clear. The serum floating on his clot was thick and greasy white. It looked like glue. In fact, it stuck to the sides of the blood tube when I shook the tube. I went back to the patient. I said, Mr. Phillips, did you eat before you came to the hospital tonight? He said, yes. I said, what did you have? He said, I had a cheeseburger and a milkshake. And when he said that, I realized that what I was looking at in his tube was all the fat in the beef burger, all the butter fat in the cheese, and the butter fat in the ice cream, and in the milkshake. And all this fat had oozed out into his blood and actually turned his blood fatty. Well, 30, 40, 50 years of keeping your blood very fatty creates changes in the blood vessels that are very dangerous. Over the years, arteries can become clogged with fatty material. Then a blood clot can form, blocking the blood flow completely. If the artery leads to the heart, the lack of oxygen can cause heart muscle to die. That's a heart attack. If the clogged artery leads to the brain, the patient has a stroke. The next morning, we took Mr. Phillips to the operating room, and I put him to sleep, and the surgeon opened up his chest. And from these arteries, he began pulling out yellow, greasy deposits of fatty material called atherosclerosis. Did you see the true killer? Did you see the atherosclerosis? 
Do you know that a 35-year-old man in this country, depending on the risk factor profile that he has, can have 140 times higher likelihood of a heart attack in the next six years when compared to a person who has more ideal levels? And we can change these risk factors. We can change them in 30 days. We can do something about our cholesterol. We can do something about our high blood pressure. We can do something about our triglycerides. We can do something about our, our diabetes, our obesity. These are largely under the control of our diet. And of course, we can do something about smoking. We can do something about our exercise patterns. And we can learn how to control our stresses perhaps better. Remember, the good news is that we can change our lifestyle patterns and thus we reduce our risk for heart disease. We're now beginning to learn that the way we live largely determines the way we die. We can make a change. We can live with all of our hearts. Healthy by choice, not chance.